All right, moving on to the United States. President Trump is increasingly in hot water lately for allegedly supporting supposed white nationalist group, the Proud Boys. And this after Trump was grilled on his relation to such groups in last week's presidential debates. So, who are the Proud Boys exactly and what do they stand for? Joining us to discuss is counterterrorism analyst and CEO of Valens Global Counterterror Consultants, David Gartenstein Ross. David, thank you so much for being with us today. Great to join you. All right, now, David, you know, Homeland Security just recently named white supremacist groups as the biggest domestic terror threat to the United States, including for their hatred of Jews and their perception that the government is controlled by Jewish persons. Where did the Proud Boys fit in? The Proud Boys aren't a white supremacist group. They're a very controversial group for reasons I'll get to. They describe themselves as Western chauvinists, but they're led by an Afro-Caribbean. One of their most prominent members is Polynesian, uh, and they've repeatedly decried uh, reports that they're anti-Semitic, though their founder, Gavin McInnes, and several of the members have made very clearly anti-Semitic and controversial statements about Jews. Um, they have to be understand, I think, understood, I think, in context of rising domestic tensions and a lot of street violence between people of different political persuasions. They tend to define themselves in opposition to Antifa, which stands for anti-fascism, uh, which is both an idea but also a movement. And frequently, one could see Proud Boys and Antifa brawling one another on the streets. Uh, it's a real problem that the political situation in the U.S. has uh, devolved to the point that street violence is seen by many as a more routine part of politics. Well, do we have concrete examples, however, of President Trump supporting them? Supporting the Proud Boys? No. Uh, in, the, in the debate, when he was asked to uh, condemn white supremacist groups, uh, Joe Biden said Proud Boys when Trump was asking for an example. Um, then Trump said, well, I've never heard of the Proud Boys. I don't know who they are, and said my message to them is to, uh, is to stand back. Sure. Now, there have been some members of the Republican Party who have been uh, filmed uh, with uh, Proud Boy activists. Ted Cruz is among them. But as I said, Proud Boys in itself is regarded as a Western chauvinist organization. That's how they describe themselves. They've been involved in some street brawls, which unfortunately isn't that common, but they're not in the same league as other groups like Patriot Prayer or those that are explicitly white supremacist in orientation. One other aspect, though, that I should mention of the Proud Boys that makes them controversial is that in some of their street organizing, they have cooperated with organizations that are more explicitly white supremacist in outlook. And Patriot Prayer, which I mentioned before, is an example of one of those groups that they have been known to cooperate with. Well, so... You know, because if I, if I, you know, reading on their about page, the Proud Boys about page, you know, they talk about how they uh, are fighting for the freedom of speech on both sides, including for their enemies. So partnering with a group that, that maybe they don't see eye to eye, it actually falls in line with that about section. But, you know, what do you suggest be done? Well, I'm not here making suggestions about what should, what should be done. Um, you know, you, I was invited on as an analyst of this group, and I'm presenting the reasons why. They're controversial. You're presenting something which can be read as a defense. And I agree that that's exactly what spokesmen for the group would say. If, if I were to give a policy prescription, though, it would be about the overall um, contentiousness of domestic politics. With civility collapsing in U.S. politics, you have what one could regard as reciprocal radicalization, where uh, groups that are concerned about the rise of Antifa and threats to free speech on the left will coalesce around other groups that they think could protect them. And likewise, people concerned about white supremacist groups or other groups on the right that are very aggressive might see Antifa in a more positive light. Wow. I think one of the things that the U.S. needs to concentrate on is returning civility to the political sphere. Uh, and a second thing is um, concentrating on different kinds of propaganda and disinformation and other actors who are seeking to divide the American public. There is unprecedented polarization, and that's putting us in a weak position in which groups that engage in street violence are seen as more of a routine part of politics. And that does not work out well for any society. The U.S. will not be an exception. All right. David Gartenstein-Ross, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure.